G'day guys, West from Unsealed. So, our next little video in our 12 volt guide is the Humble Multimeter. This is, don't get me wrong, a big angry one. Um, no matter which one you get, whether it's a big stupid one like this, absolute top of the range like a fluke, or your $20 jobby from JCar, chances are it'll still do the same job. Um, let's go through on this one what the singly most important couple of things that the multimeter will tell you. Um, specifically, we're going to look at volts. And we're also going to look at a continuity tester. Um, they're probably the biggest ones we're going to want to use. The, you can do them, you can use them, I should say, uh, to do amps and a few other bits and pieces. We've got another meter to show us that. So anyway, let's get into the multimeter. All right, guys, multimeters. So we've got, now I've got my te test bench set up, as you guys have probably seen before. And I know that I've got power here and power here. So positive and negative. So on my multimeter, if I go from positive to negative I know that I've got 12.59 volts from my power source which is the batteries in my camper funnily enough all right so that's the first thing it tells us a we can test what our batteries are like now funnily enough I actually need to go out camping more often to give those batteries a charge um I haven't been out for a while and you can tell because it's been sitting in the shed doing nothing all right so that's the first thing it gives us if we put that across your average battery in a four-wheel drive while it's running, we should be seeing upwards of 13.6, depending on the vehicle. I mean, my Land Cruiser sits on 14.4, 14.5 while it's charging. The Hilux, on the other hand, sits at 13.8, 13.9. So it just depends vehicle to vehicle. Um, but obviously more than 12.8, 12.9, if you're above 13, your battery is most likely charging, you're at least getting a charge current from your alternator. Okay, that's the first thing we can see. The next thing we can use it for is for testing um, resistance and continuity. So with that, this will actually give us 0.23 ohms by touching the two connectors together. All right, so I'll put the light on. I don't know if that's gonna help you guys at all. Um, but if I go to, oh, that tells me I've got a short. All right, so what that says is that between two points, so, I don't know whether you guys have seen the video yet, but we showed you how to join a wire. So that wire should be joined well. And if I go from one end to the other, it beeps at me. All right, so I can check to see if something's in earth, if I've earthed it properly. Uh, if I don't get a short, it means it's not earthed properly or it's not earthed at all. All right, that is a very, very useful little tool. Despite the squealing beep it does, it lets you know very easily and very quickly. It's good for chasing back wires as well to see what goes where. All right, um, something worth noting, we have a fuse here, right? So normally, if it's still in the fuse holder, you'll use it on there, and then you'll use it on there. All right, so into the top two things, if it's still in the fuse holder, you're gonna pull it out and check it. Obviously place it against the two legs, and it tells me it's a short, it's a good fuse. Fuse is good. We get this fuse that is absolutely blown, we know it's blown. We put it from there to there. We have no connection. All right, there's a really, really easy way to check the fuses in your car are good or whether they're bad. All right, so if you think you've got a blind fuse, instead of having to pull each, every single one of them out one by one, you can just do that. And it will tell you whether the fuse is good or not. All right, really nice, simple one. Other than that, the multimeter, don't get me wrong, does plenty of stuff. Uh, this one specifically, you know, you've got volts, millivolts, ohms. I have no idea what that one is. You can look at hertz, you can look at temperature. I haven't got the temperature probe with me. Um, and you can check microamps, milliamps, and amps. Obviously, you use your different poles. Funnily enough, on a multimeter, your COM port is always your common. So there's always your earth, depending on what you're checking. If you're checking volts and ohms, use this one. If you're checking full-size amps, so big amps, up to a maximum of 10, this one will run at. Use that port. If you're using test, testing micro or milliamps, then you go to there. All right. Other than that, that is how a multimeter, how you can use your multimeter that sits at home. They are really simple devices, um, but work wonders to be honest, and give you a lot of information without having to start pulling stuff apart.